What's up, what's up everyone? So hopefully you guys had a good weekend. We are gonna go into the market next week. And I'm not gonna be trading tomorrow because I'm not gonna be watching the market and I'm not gonna have Wi-Fi. So I'm not actually gonna be watching. But that doesn't mean I can still chart out stocks that you guys want me for me to chart. So before we get started, I just want to say please like the stream because the only uh, way YouTube can actually beef up the algorithm for the stream is for you to like it and it's also going to spread the word to more people that actually want charting for their stocks and also the more stocks you look at the more trading ideas you can get which will benefit your portfolio in the long run so uh, if you guys can like the stream that would be great um, you know if you guys want to subscribe to this channel feel free to do so I'm going to be posting more watch lists and more streams in the future on here so what you guys can do right now, you guys can uh, put in tickers in the chat, put in any general questions. May I, I did receive a good question before the stream asking me about whether I use the body or the candle, uh, or the uh, candle body or the candle wick. And my answer is I use both. And uh, over here, for example, I charted f uh, from this point all the way through the body of the candle because we closed right below and we opened at the body and just went straight down. So this was a pretty hard rejection point. But over here I used a wick because if you think about it, if I used a wick over here, we did reject over here today. So actually using the body here would make more sense because we did touch the wick. So it does vary on different situations and you just have to see which one, which point fits your line the most. If only the wick fits your line, then use the wick. If only the body fits it, then use the body. But there's always room for, to like jump around. Like for example, I do see some resistance for Bitcoin over here actually. And you can see that I am using the wicks. There's one, two, three, four, four resistance points. And so that's where you can see that Bitcoin does reject there. And it looks like Bitcoin did have a bit of a run today and volume does not look too great. So. Bitcoin did pump on low volume today, which is actually pretty interesting. And usually weekends do um, have very low volume for crypto. So we just have to see what it does tomorrow. But I do think Bitcoin is probably going to try to retest this resistance over here. If it does reject, I'm, I might see it retest the 33K mark because that is, that is prior resistance and now it's turned into support. So I'm going to see, I'm going to see it test support. And if it does, then we can probably go up even higher. That's only if we hold. If we don't hold, then we might go right back down here and maybe try the double bottom. But currently for Bitcoin, uh, as I said, things the bear start is are starting to lose momentum. So like if you, I'm going to daily chart right here. Yeah, if you go on the daily chart, you can see that for a TTM squeeze, the purple bars actually have been getting super weak. But also on the larger picture, there is a tiny problem that is that this does look like a bear flag and that is a big problem because, you know, even in the larger picture, even though Bitcoin's fundamentals are really good and crypto is starting to get more momentum, we can't ignore this head and shoulders pattern and this giant cons consolidation point here that can end up very well being a bear flag. So we just have to keep in mind that, but currently uh, I do see Bitcoin rejecting this resistance over here. Possibly we can retest it again, but if we don't retest it, I can see it go all the way back to 32k. Possibly 30k, hopefully not, but um, I do see going down to 33k, 32k around that area to retest the support line, which used to be resistance, but now we turned into support because we broke right through resistance. All right, that is it for Bitcoin. Now we can go into some stocks. I saw a lot of people asking me about CCIV, so I'm going to look at that first. So I did see that CCIV did get the news of Lucid Motors. Um, that basically means that CCIV can either perform a sell the news, which is what happened over here around February 22nd, where CCIV was officially merged with Lucid and it crashed from $58 all the way to $40. And this is where it performed like the sell the news. So uh, a lot of times you hear on uh, everywhere you hear, hear about to buy the buy the rumor, sell the news. Basically for buy the rumor, it's basically, you know, sell when there's a rumor, right? Sell when there's hype. But when the actual news does break out, everyone's going to start selling over here. And you don't want to get in the middle of this selling point. You want to get in the middle of selling when everything is really hyped up because that's when everyone buys. But 
you know, you have to buy when everyone sells. And when everyone sells here, maybe you can buy, maybe you can wait, right? You could have bought at $17 and CCIV is back at $25. So you just have to find a way for you to actually know when to buy the, buy the, uh, you know, buy the rumor and then, you know, sell the news. But uh, the news does worry me about CCIV. CCIV can either react really badly to the news and go down or even if the news is really good ccib can still um it can still perform really badly and perform another sell the news so we just have to see i think that it's going to do another sell the news not not as extreme as the first drop but i i do think there's going to be a drop but looking at technical analysis wise i do see some sort of like uh, inverse head and shoulders on the larger time frame you can see that this is the left shoulder right this is the head this is the right shoulder we're gonna have to go all the way to $27 for us to actually test if this shoulder is actually legit or not but currently on the larger time frame I do see some kind of rounded bottom you can see that there's a uh, lower low lower low lower low lower low kind of double bottom here but it did go a little lower but now we just formed another higher low and looks like we're actually going up so depending on if we break out this consolidation over here you can see on the hourly that CCIV is consolidating over here. If we break that out and kind of test this $27 range, we do have a possibility to go right back up to $33. And you know, if we do go back to $33, this is like that official resistance before we can fill this gap all the way up to $60. So what's my plan on CCIV? Well, it really depends on the news because uh, depending on the news, that's where it's CCIV is gonna go. Uh, it doesn't really technical analysis doesn't really matter in this situation because the news can easily break CCIV out. All right, so uh, let's take a look at CLNE. I'm pretty sure this is a meme stock. Before I get further, guys, I do see a bunch of new people going on here, and you know I really love you guys asking questions and uh, liking this stream is going to benefit everyone because. I want YouTube to you know, beef up this algorithm, have more people join the stream and ask questions because at the end of the day, it's going to benefit everyone, right? You can get new trading ideas by looking at the stream, by looking at different charts. So yeah, make sure to share the stream, make sure to like the stream and let's get start. Uh, can, let's continue, I guess. So on CLNE, I do see some sort of inverse head and shoulders. It's not the most perfect one, but you can see this is the left shoulder. This is the head. And then the right shoulder is kind of messy, but you can still see that it's consolidating over here. And hold on one second. I need to get a phone call real quick. I'm sorry, I'm back. And... As I was saying for CLNE, there is a inverse head and shoulders. You know, if you go on a larger time frame for CLNE, you can kind of see a cup and handle. This does qualify. Actually, I don't know. It's pretty it's pretty questionable, but But as I, as I was saying, it was it does look pretty questionable. I do see some sort of consolidation over here, but you can also say this is forming a wedge. And usually these types of wedges are pretty neutral, so either we're going to break to the upside or break to the downside. Though right now, right now I do see it uh, inverse head and shoulders, which does uh, point me more to the upside. RSI is starting to calm down, which means that we do have more room to go up. But there's also some long-term resistance over here. It's not the most cleanest line that I've ever drawn, but... You can see that it needs to break the level of $12.30, close to $12, close to $12.40 before we can actually do reverse. And keep in mind that there is earnings uh, on the, let's see, on the uh, August 10th. Okay, that's pretty far away. So that's my short term outlook for CLNE. Okay, next stock is going to be PLTR. I see two people asking for it, so I'm going to do that. Oops, wrong one, PLTR. Oh, so okay, I already have a rising wedge drawn though, and it looks like it breaks around July 6th, July 7th, which is that week 
that is all there, that is the week where there's a ton of rising wedges that's going to break out and PLTR looks like uh, it is one of the stocks that has that rising wedge. So what do I expect for PLTR as uh, along as like Airbnb, I think Chewy also has the same rising wedge. I'm expecting all of these stocks to go red that week and I expect the market to actually follow these stocks because there are a ton of rising wedges on these stocks. So for example, Airbnb has one of these rising wedges, Chewy has one of these rising wedges and so does PLTR. So you know, just be careful when you trade. It is getting quite tight in that channel. You can see that on the four hour chart. It follows this rising wedge pretty nicely and we, you know, kind of reject near resistance and we bounce to support. So maybe you can play this bounce all the way up to the breakout, but do be careful that breakout is soon. Lows. Oh, sorry, I see Netflix. Let me take a look at Netflix. Ooh, what happened in Netflix? Okay, let me take a look here. So for Netflix, it looks like it, it is forming this gap. I see it going all the way to, it closed at 549, let's say around like 546. I see it going up to 546 and going right back down. Netflix is usually good at filling gaps. So I see it filling this gap to 546. It did form these gaps over here, which I think is gonna get filled. If you go in the larger picture, you see that Netflix has been consolidating, right? It has been trading sideways for like a couple of months now almost like a year actually yeah Netflix has been trading sideways for almost a year now and you can see that usually when it makes an up gap it immediately uh, fills it whenever it makes a bear gap it usually immediately fills it so right now it is currently uh, filling a bear gap I do see some a bull gap over here which means that we're probably gonna go down and looking at resistance uh, it might actually be helpful to go to weekly chart because that's how long Netflix has actually been consolidating for. You can see that around this price range, Netflix does re reject, which is around 560. And around this price, Netflix does bounce off, so around 474. So it's like a $120, not even a $100 20, it's like a $80, $90 box that Netflix has been bouncing around. And you can see that Netflix is close. I think it's gonna bounce off 546. If not, then 560. That is around like that range where I think Netflix is a good place to sell your calls. Also, something to keep in mind is Netflix is reaching the six. This uh, sorry the yeah the 70 RSI range, which is overbought. Usually, when Netflix touches that 70 range, it does reject. Currently, Netflix is in that right now, and usually when it does go over, it rejects pretty hardly, which also supports my claim that is it is going to fill this gap over here um right when we fill this bear gap so that's my that is my outlook for netflix i do think it's going to fill this gap to 546 but it is going to fill this bull gap sometime soon depending on when that is debatable so next stock we have is let me take a look it is going to be Lowe's and Lowe's does follow Home Depot or the, the, those sectors do follow each other. So taking a look at Lowe's, it has broken out of this falling wedge a few days ago. Looks like the, it is consolidating. It's holding on to the 9 EMA. What I'm expecting for Lowe's on the daily is for that 9 EMA to cross that 21 EMA. Currently the 9 EMA is that dark green line and the 21 EMA is that red line. And those are short-term moving averages. And as soon as they cross, that shows that we're in an uptrend again. Uh, it's more of like a supported uptrend. If I go in a smaller time frame, you can see that this kind of does look like a bull flag. We're kind of tra trading in a channel. If I go in a smaller time frame, you can see that we're trading along this box over here, which is consolidation. And for us to break out of it, we're gonna have to break where it closed on Friday. So. We can either gap up on Monday, we can either gap down and hopefully still trade in this box, or we can, you know, not do anything at open and hopefully break out and explode even more. So I am bullish on lows, even though there's this tiny gap over here. We might go back down and fill it, but I don't think we're going to fill it just as soon. 
but I do see a bull, ga bull, bull flag over here which is bullish and this consolidation is also going to allow lows to go even higher. So I am bullish on lows though we might tr have some red days here and there but in the long run about a month or now I do see lows going up. Alright next stock is going to be Disney. And Disney you can see that let me take a look at Disney oh that does not look very nice actually so the first thing I see on Disney is a head and shoulders pattern which is bearish it honestly kind of reminds me of AMD not gonna lie because AMD also has a giant head and shoulders but for Disney it looks like we bounced right around this 170 range and you know continue to go up um, it is currently at a level of resistance around this level over here and also if it does manage to get past it we it is going to have to break 180 so i'm not really expecting disney to break these two levels it might it looks like it has broken around like let me actually chart this correctly it looks like it it, it did close around 178 looks like we did gap up to 178 and actually went back down because it if you go on like a regular candlestick you can see that this is a red candlestick but let's take a look at a smaller time frame for Disney and the two hour I don't usually use the two hour chart the three hour chart you can see that for Disney that's the resistance one two three so we currently did bounce off a of resistance Support's kind of questionable because there's really not that many points. But if Disney continues to trade in this wedge over here, a wedge is uh, neutral. And this can possibly just form another big shoulder down and we double bottom at 167. And possibly break down and fill this gap over here. Or even this gap down here around 128. But my prediction for Disney is it's going to be bouncing around this wedge over here. So if I actually get the correct drawing tool right so right here 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 and then we go all the way down to double bottom so that's my prediction for Disney either either way this this you know this neutral symmetrical triangle can surprise me this can end up actually going up which in that case we're gonna be testing around this consolidation point over here where it's, there's gonna be a lot of you know selling momentum so we're just going to see for Disney, but that is what I see on Disney right now. Roku is next. Ooh, okay, so Roku had quite a recovery last week, and uh, as it did recover, it did form a couple of gaps. Right, there's a gap right here that I see. Um, well, but Roku had a couple of green days, which is crazy, and um, it is almost back at all-time highs, which is crazy, because just the other day I saw, I did see it around like 200, which is quite nuts. And um, if you look at Roku, uh, the daily chart looks pretty bullish. On the hourly chart, it looks like we did consolidate. We held the 9 EMA, which is good. But as you do see, there are gaps. And Roku is usually good at filling gaps. And, you know, there's this like bull gap over here. We filled it. There's... There was another gap over here, we filled it. There was a gap over here, we just immediately searched and filled it. So there is a gap over here. Depending how the market is next week, which is questionable, Q Roku usually follows the QQQ and ARC. You can see for QQQ on the daily chart. Oh wow, I haven't seen QQQ in a while. So QQQ actually broke resistance, which is pretty crazy. Let me take a look. Yeah, QQQ actually broke resistance, which is pretty cool, and it actually does. It actually did hold it. Um, QQQ might dip down below resistance and go to the 9 EMA, which will take Roku with it. But for Roku, if assuming that everything goes well, I do expect Roku to test all-time highs. It looks like it is in the midway, fill, filling this bear gap over here, which I do think it's going to fill it, which is around 4.35. So Roku is probably going to go down up another five dollars. It might reject. It might reject this price over here at four hundred forty-four dollars, because that is the first resistance it's going to have to test. And if it breaks that, then we're going to be 
testing the 485 dollar range where it looks like Roku has rejected it three times before this giant crash. So that is my prediction on Roku. Next stock is going to be Netflix and I actually did look at that CCL okay Carnival Cruise Lines. All right, so for Carnival Cruise Lines, um, it looks it looks like it follows the airline ind industry. It looks like it follows airlines. It follows a uh, Boeing, and currently those have not been doing so well. And also, especially the Dow, not doing the greatest. Uh, CCL is going to follow. So, you know, if uh, current, I'll I'll do a short analysis for CCL. If I go into smaller time frame, you do see that there's kind of like a falling wedge over here. Not the most beautiful one but it looks like we did kind of break out of it if I draw out the resistance lines you can see that we did kind of break out of it we rejected the uh, the 50 EMA which is not good on the daily we we rejected the 50 EMA for me to be bullish again on CCL is well number one you break this resistance on the daily which looks like we are right at it number two you break the 9 EMA so if those two things don't happen I'm not bullish on CCL when you alert do you alert us limit orders or whatever you got in on so um, for when I alert I alert what I got in on which is usually which is usually available for like the first two minutes um, I try to alert the best price entries as I can sometimes stocks do move really fast and I can't really control that so but like nine times out of ten, I try to. Uh, my alerts usually are pretty easy to get in. And uh, let's take a look. Also, insight on Nvidia and Tesla again, if you haven't gotten to it. So, taking a look at Nvidia first. The stock split is on July twentieth, and what I think Nvidia is going to do on the twentieth is it's going to be pulling a Tesla, which is going to be. Uh, it's going to. It's probably going to go back down to around like 500, 592. I do think it's going to do that. It is at 70, which is crazy. And um, it's not 70, 700. And I don't really see a pattern on NVIDIA, but just the fact that usually when it does surge, it kind of consolidates into the 9 EMA. I can see that happening again, where NVIDIA is probably going to consolidate into like the 745, 750 range until going higher. You can see on the, on the, on the, like the hourly chart, Nvidia did go below the 9 EMA. It looks like it's actually holding below the 9 EMA. This consolidation over here does look like a bear flag. So we can see Nvidia go fall on the 50 EMA on the hourly, which is going to translate to around you know the 9 EMA on the daily. So I am expecting a short pullback for Nvidia, though uh, in the long term I am expecting this to run until the split date, which is July 20th. Um, Xpeng. So Xpeng is going to be running along with China stocks. And speaking of China stocks, they have been doing really well lately, and especially like Baba. Looking at Xpeng on like a shorter term time frame, you can see that there's some sort of pattern forming here. It honestly, I don't even know. It doesn't really qualify as anything. I do see maybe a wedge but I'm not really sure about that that is interesting um okay so I do see I do see like a ascending broadening wedge I, I think that qualifies it because that, yeah that qualifies it pretty well actually so an ascending broadening wedge is a bearish pattern and it's basically just a megaphone pattern angling upwards which is exactly what's happening right now uh, Bitcoin had a similar pattern, but it was the descending broadening wedge, which is the complete opposite. It's bullish. Currently, Xpeng has a ascending broadening wedge, which I think is which is bearish. Not I think, but it is bearish. And usually, when you know when it breaks out is when it's so it makes a higher high, higher high, higher high, and then it suddenly makes a lower high over here. You do see it starts to consolidate. It's losing bull momentum, which means that. We are looking for a breakout to the downside on Xpeng. So I am expecting Xpeng to break down uh, in the next week. Uh, to where that is, so if I go on the daily chart, I do expect Xpeng to go back around $39. Uh, if we break this $39 range, we're probably going to be filling some gaps 
and I think the next gap we're going to be filling is around $32. So I am expecting XPing to pull back. It is in a bearish pattern right now, and uh, these descend ascending broadening wedges are usually play out really well, and especially for XPing when it's still pretty unstable from you know the high of 73. I am expecting XPing to fall. FSLY, let's take a look. All right, so it looks like FSLY has filled the gap over here. We are consolidating right now above the 9 EMA. Uh, let's take a look. That is interesting. Um, let me take a quick look. It looks like we are sort of forming. Let's take. Let me turn off volume so I can see the wicks. That's interesting. Um, you can say this is kind of like a rising wedge, though it is quite kind of you know, it's kind of it's kind of questionable, looking at support over here, but. If this is a rising wedge, a breakout's around, let's just extend this for the sake of it. And looks like it's July 6th and July 7th. So I just found another rising wedge breaking out July 6th and July 7th, and it's going to be FSLY. So it looks like all of these growth stocks, especially these newer growth stocks, are going to be having a pretty red day around July 6th and July 7th. Uh, uh, FSLY has just filled its gap, which means that it is also approaching more of the selling, the selling price ranges around. Um, it's around like uh, sixty-two dollars and to around seventy-seven dollars. So around this range, this is where X, uh, where not X pain, where FSLY is probably going to struggle. And usually when it consolidates like this, it doesn't really end well. So I am expecting FSLY to take a slight pullback. Depending on where, well, if you look on the larger time frame on the daily, uh, it's it's most likely going to test that 9 EMA again around $57. Uh, if we get real serious, we might go back down to the 21 EMA around $55. But um, I am expecting a pullback soon. Also guys, I see a bunch of new people joining the stream. Make sure to like the stream so it can beef up YouTube's algorithm so more people can ask questions and more people can ask me tickers to charts so that you guys can get more trading ideas and it benefits everyone in the long run. All right, so next stock is gonna be, um, I'm just gonna quickly go through some Tilray. So looking at Tilray, I honestly don't see anything. This does look like bear flag over here. Uh, if I go on a smaller time frame, all right. So maybe this kind of looks like an inverse head and shoulders. All right. So on Tilray, I do see an inverse head and shoulders, which is bullish. The left shoulders over here. If I can do this correctly. So I do see an inverse head and shoulders. If I go on the hourly chart, right, and I plot out the neckline, so. Uh, Tilray is going to have to break $18.41 to uh, break the neckline resistance, which is where it's going to explode up. I'm expecting Tilray to test this $20 range. Uh, if it gets really good, around this $22 to $23 range for Tilray. Keep in mind, this is a meme stock, so wherever meme stocks will go, this is where it's going to go. But usually, on my experiences, Tilray isn't fully a follower of AMC and GameStop, it's more of like it goes on its own pace. But whenever it does break out on anything, it does break out pretty, like, it looks, it breaks out a lot. Like $18, a $2 move on the $18 stock is a lot for stock. So I'm expecting Tilray to go up. So if you guys want a really good pattern, take note of Tilray, wait for confirmation when it breaks out the neckline, and when it does, and you see that there's confirmation, you can ride it up to $20. Amazon. Ooh, that does not look really nice. And the reason I'm saying that is because on the hourly chart, there's this giant round the top and looks like we're making a bear flag over here. So easy answer for Amazon is we're going to go, we're going to go down even further. Um, on the daily chart, 
it does not look good at all i think we're gonna go right back we're gonna go down to the 21 ema to test at three uh 3.381k so we're probably gonna go down another 20 dollars from here uh to test the 21 ema uh as as i said if we don't uh hold one ema we go down to the next one which is around uh 3318 which is also around the demand zone of this kind of bounce over here so um, around this bounce, I think is also around that 50 EMA. It's a bit below it, but it's in the general area. And well, first of all, I'm expecting Amazon to, to hold a 21 as long as the markets go along with it. Uh, maybe even on a short time frame, you may see a falling wedge. Though this is a really, yeah, no, it's not really good. It's not really a good falling wedge, but yeah, no. You know what? Screw that falling wedge. But I do see a bear flag over here. PRPL. So for purple, looks like I see another rising wedge that actually just broke out the other day. Okay, so I, this rising wedge just broke out, which means that it is in a bearish pattern right now. I mean, it did break out of a bearish pattern. And where can it go now? So it looks like it did hold a 21 EMA. If I go in the larger time frame, I do expect, so we held a 21 EMA on the daily actually, but we did reject the 200, which is quite normal usually. I am expecting us to uh, have a further pullback, probably to the nine EMA around 27.5. Though, yeah, actually, yeah, I am expecting a pullback to 27.5 or maybe even lower. Possibly to form a second shoulder for this inverse head and shoulders that can potentially form. Right, so this is the left shoulder head. And the right shoulder can be here. And we can kind of just go maneuver down here and no. And if I can use this point, no, and just continue to go up. So we can possibly play that direction or we just continue to go down and form a double bottom, which is totally possible. Or we just ignore all this and we just continue to go up, which is also possible. And possibly to around $29 to test this resistance and continue to go up. Baba. So as I said, China stocks has been doing really well. I don't currently see a pattern on Baba besides Baba going to a giant resistance zone. Because this zone over here around you know, this range over here. This range is usually a busy part for Baba. Uh, usually, usually a, a zone where it sells. You can see that as we, you know, or as we go consolidate here, we, you know, Baba does look. It does look like it's in some kind of resistance. I would say if Baba holds this, if it breaks this 100 EMA over here, which it looks like we just rejected, then I'm going to be bullish on Baba. But so far, I do think we're going to have a slight pullback because we did reject 100 EMA. And we're in a giant level of resistance, which means that we're going to have to start consolidating pretty soon. Alright, and next stock is Airbnb. As I said about Airbnb a couple of days ago, it does have this rising wedge. And looks like we just bounced off support. Breakouts around July 6th, July 7th, which is among all, a lot of other stocks like Chewy and PLTR, where uh, it is also forming a rising wedge. Breakout is around July 6th and July 7th, so we're just going to see, but I do think that we're going to break out. Until then, we're going to be bouncing around this rising wedge, so, you know, the path for Airbnb is probably to 155 again, back down to 151, back up to 155, back down to 153, and then we finally break out, and if I can use this properly... And then we finally break out. So, that is what I think about Airbnb. Though, this can always surprise me and go up. But something else to pay attention to Airbnb is this giant round the top and this rising wedge, which forms the inverse cup and handle, which is also a bearish pattern. So, I currently see two bearish patterns within one on Airbnb, which is definitely not good. Facebook. 
So for Facebook, just looking at the blind eye, it looks like this does look like QQQ. Um, it did break all time highs. If I want to do technical analysis on here, which I will right now, there is kind of a line of resistance over here. And support kind of looks like this. If I extend all of these lines out, you can see that there is a rising wedge forming. I can be a bit more biased on support over here and kind of make it more tight. Uh, and looks like, and look at that, July 6th and July 7th, this rising wedge is going to break out. So on Facebook, there's a rising wedge that also breaks around July 6th and July 7th, which means that I am expecting the market to be pretty red on July 6th and July 7th because Facebook actually has a pretty, um, it, it has a good amount of weight in the S&P 500 and the Dow. Not the Dow, I think, yeah, maybe the Dow, but, and also NASDAQ. So if this goes down and even, and Chewy and, Xpeng and uh, Airbnb follows. I'm expecting a bunch of other stocks that also possibly have rising wedges that we haven't found, but also stocks in general, they're probably going to fall. So I'm expecting a pullback. The magic date is July 6th and July 7th. I see way too many falling, sorry, not falling, rising wedges, which are bearish. And I'm expecting those patterns to play, uh, play out around that week. All right, next stock is Goldman Sachs, which is GS. And banks have been actually recovering. Uh, as I said in the watch list last week, I did say Bank of America is gonna recover this week and looks like we did recover. Oh, uh, we recovered pretty nicely on banks. We did reclaim the 90 EMA, which is good on the weekly. On the daily, you can argue that this kind of looks like a bear flag and we can go down and retest the level 348. We did hold the 9 EMA so I'm ex and the 21 EMA, so I'm expecting us to probably retest the 9 EMA because this does look like we are losing some bull momentum. And also, keep in mind of this descending broadening wedge. We're still within the broadening wedge, which is bullish. If I go on the 4 hour chart, it's probably easier to see it, and it is. We actually just reject we actually just rejected resistance today, not today, last week. So I'm expecting a short term pullback, but in the long term, which I do mean for like the next week, next two weeks, I am expecting Goldman Sachs to possibly go back up to 392. And the only reason is because I do see a bullish pattern of a descending broadening wedge, which is bullish. And, um, this is the pattern the SPY played out when it was crashing and look at that, we, SPY's at new all time highs. I do remember a couple of streams back where I did say that SPY is going to go to all new, new all time highs with this pattern and sure enough it did and Bitcoin had the same pattern and sure enough it broke to 36k. So currently for Goldman Sachs I do see the same exact pattern as I saw on SPY and Bitcoin. So I'm expecting Goldman Sachs to uh, retest the 52 week high and possibly break it, but I am expecting us to break out of this downtrend pretty soon. All right, I'm going to do Wish, and I'm going to do Baidu, and I'm going to do Home Depot and Shopify, and I'm going to stop for the day, okay? So Wish is number one on the list, and uh, looking at Wish, it looks like we are forming some kind of breakout that's going to happen pretty soon. You can see around this price of $14.55, there is some solid resistance and if we if I draw out up support we are forming an ascending triangle and if you look over here this is a rounded bottom this does qualify as a cup and handle and I'm expecting us to break out to the upside there's going to probably be some some explosive move upwards we're probably going to go to the uh, 200 EMA around $15 I think we're going to easily blow past that and probably go to around $19 because this is a Wall Street bet stock and uh, things usually go crazy along with it. So this is the path I expect. Oh, and I can draw lines over here again. So uh, this is the path I'm expecting Wish to go to and maybe not that steep, but maybe somewhere like this, I'm expecting Wish to have that path. Next stock is gonna be Baidu. And looks like Baidu has broken out this wedge. It broke the descending, uh, you know, resistance. And 
it looks like we did reject some kind of resistance if like on the daily chart oh, okay looks like we held the 150 EMA um, looks like the 9 EMA just crossed the 21 EMA on the daily which is good news looks like our side still has room to go up and I am expecting Baidu to probably run all the way up to the 100 EMA and possibly rejecting around $205 I'm expecting a rejection there and possibly consolidating, but the 9 EMA crossing the 21 EMA is good news for Baidu, which means that we are starting to go in a reliable uptrend. Uh, we haven't actually crossed the, the 9 EMA actually hasn't crossed the 21 EMA to the upside since, ever since. And if I can take a look here, you can argue ever since November of last year. So. The 9 crossing the 21 is a big deal, and it does show that Baidu is going to have a pretty big reversal pretty soon. Home Depot. So similarly to Lowe's, Home Depot is having the same exact consolidation after breaking out of this falling wedge. I'm expecting Home Depot to possibly go higher next week. Um, I am expecting it to go around the $322 range, because it looks like we did kind of break the resistance of these points over here and I do think that we're going to probably test the resistance around 320 321 area because it does look like an area consolidation so that's what I see for Home Depot uh, for Shopify alright so for Shopify it looks like I did plot out this ascending broadening wedge a couple of days ago and looks like Shopify did play out of this pretty beautifully and it did bounce off the 21 EMA and looks like it did reject the 9 EMA actually. So I am expecting Shopify to go right back down to the 21 EMA pretty easily. We did reject the 9 EMA which is not good for Shopify because now that we're in a downtrend, Shopify can go right back down to uh, 1.4K, 1.43K and we're just going to have to see where Shopify is going to go. We might just consolidate here. We might go right back down to 1.27K. We just have to see. All right, so that's going to be the stream for today. Uh, hopefully, you guys do well in the market tomorrow. If you guys have any questions, you guys can always DM me on Discord. My Discord username should be... Uh, let me actually paste that in the chat. This is my Discord username. And if you guys can please like the stream and share the stream because the more people watch the stream, the more the people will get educated and more people have access to financial freedom and that is the ultimate goal of this channel so if you guys can like the stream that would be great that would be, i'll be really thankful if you guys want to subscribe that's going to be that's going to be even better but until then until then if i can actually find okay yeah so until then i'm gonna call it off here you know hopefully you guys have a good day tomorrow if you guys um have any questions you guys can always ask me I'm not going to be uh, live. I'm not going to be calling out alerts soon. So um, I'm going to be starting to call alerts around the July six week. So it's going to be the bloody week. So yeah, buckle your stock market seatbelts. Please hedge your accounts and yeah, please stay risk managed. And I'll see you guys soon.